Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Lil Hellfire, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Summer 69. 69, 9, 9, 9. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you, a calculator? 6.9999999. That's right, kids. Welcome back to another episode of the Capes and Lunatics. Summer of 69 has started here. You're only the flame one is week. lit, my friends. <laughs> episode 268. You are one week away from like 269. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that man in that room in New Jersey. Hashtag free Charlie Esser. It is Charlie the Professor Esser. It's a bunker, Phil. And I don't you know, if you turn your calculator upside down, you can make it say boobies. I know. And that, wo- that woman who looks like she has wall to wall carpeting on her walls. It is. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's a little hellfire. You know, we're in the 60s. Shag carpet. I'm just trying to catch a vibe, man. Oh, Lilith has a shagadelic room. Hey. <laughs> All right. So yes, this is a this is a uh, summer of 69 episode. We're gonna be covering uh Hulk because Hulk. you know why? Because Hulk smashes. Get it? He does. <laughs> yes. He's quite the smasher. <laughs> All right, so yes. Uh so every every episode this month well except for next week yeah we'll be doing hulk here so tonight we're doing incredible hulk 111 through 114 and you know you know what i love about about this this era of the hulk Hmm. just how how easy it was for him to just get tired and turn back into banner and it's just like (laughs) oh in your your typical lou ferrigno fashion yeah well you know well this this actually predates the lou ferrigno i know know, this is, but it's like, yeah, it's it's a really, uh, it's a really neat take on the Hulk. I wonder where, I mean, because I know there was a period where the Hulk did have Banner's brain <clears throat> for a while in the sixties, and I feel like this is after it, but maybe not too far after it, because he still has a lot of mind going for him. Yeah. As you were saying, he's talking in nearly complete sentences. You know, and he seems to have a bit more intellect to it. He's not hes not like big change Hulk. He's not childlike Hulk. He's really more just, you know, kind of, you know, poorly educated teenager Hulk. Um, From the mean street Hulk. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, he's just, he, he just does not like your face and he's going to punch it because he's oh. the Hulk. So he's a bigger Relatable. greener Hulk. He's a, I was going to say, he's a bigger, greener, little hellfire. Okay. <laughs> but not at the beginning of this story, Phil, because in this story, he is but a mere, nearly dead, nearly dead Bruce Banner. See, I love how you, you were like, you, you said, oh, you know, he turn, he falls asleep a lot and turns into Banner. I like how it seems like in all these stories, he's Banner for like five five minutes, and then it's like, uh-oh, I'm in another death trap. <laughs> well, you know, the man I better, does start, getting, I better start getting angry. <laughs> The man gets himself into a lot of death traps. I mean, that's that's one thing they carried over from the comics to the TV series, where pretty much everywhere he went. But to be fair, Banner was suicidal. Are we not all in agreement on this? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for me, it tracks. <laughs> He's trying to see what's actually going to work here. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me read a quick synopsis. Then we can discuss 111. All right. Incredible Hulk 111 from January 1969. Shanghai in space. Hey-o. Writer. <laughs> <laughs> Writer Stan Lee. Pencil well, Herb Her- Trimpy action. Herb Trimpy. Yeah, baby. Uh, anchor Dan Adkins. Letterer Sam Rosen. And of course, editor Stan Lee. <laughs> Stand the man, edit and stand the man. All right. Uh, the aliens who created the of writing is editing. <laughs> At least stands it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the aliens who created the device to change Earth's orbit, that's right, this will continue from last issue, have detected the machine's destruction and sent a robot out to bring them the one responsible. While in the Savage Land, Kazar and Zabu <laughs> leave the dying body of Bruce Banner behind to seek out herbs to try and heal Banner. Oh, penicillin tea, love. And that will to live. That's right. Anger is the only viable emotion, as I will tell you guys time and time again. <laughs> Leaving him to be picked up by the alien's robot and brought to their ship in space, where they intend to bring him to their master, the Galaxy Master. Boo! Cheap version of Galactus and uh, Ego had a baby. Boo! I will get to that tomorrow night. I know it. Uh, reviving the Banner Galaxy with... No, 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 that's right. No, we're going to talk about the Galaxy Master. No, he's an interesting character. We're right. That's not until next issue. The, yes, the, because... the lips from Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> Reviving Banner with their technology, the aliens are ordered, are ordered to put Banner in a pressure lock and kill him. However, Banner begins to transform into the Hulk and smashes his way loose. Uh, as you do. Uh... Smash it! Yeah. And this is where we understand that Stanley really does not understand how air pressure works. He's not a science guy, no. <laughs> no, he is not. He battles the aliens and their weapons in the vacuum of space. During the fight, the Hulk enters an exhaust tube. <laughs> uh, you got a banana in your tailpipe, aliens! No, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, where the aliens try to turn try to burn him alive. However, the engine explodes, causing the ship to crash on their home planet. When the Hulk revives, he finds himself before the Galaxy Master, a giant mass of energy that boasts that it is indestructible. We'll see about that. Yay. I don't know, man. I hear... It only takes 150 up issues. I've heard, <laughs> I, I've heard on the street, the matter Hulk gets, the stronger he gets. Uh... Yeah, so here's a question. They have the dying banner, who they know defeated the robot, <laughs> whom they're going to br they, they want to bring him back to life. But they're like, now nah, let's just throw him in the air. <laughs> but no, but it, it's just, it's just like they it's like okay, obviously he died fighting the robot, but now we have to bring him back to life because the master wants us wants him alive. So it's a delicacy, Charlie. A delicacy. It's it just seems like it's a very convoluted process that they're going through. You do um, know Stanley wrote this, right? I like their well, yeah, fresh. <laughs> um, so you just gotta you just gotta roll with it, bro. I, I, I'm 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 getting the feeling that yeah, this was one of those stories that sort of it could be written. worse. He could have left everybody else to finish the story. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I mean. Oh, you, you fixed know, that problem? I wrote you. You wrote you into the corner too. Perfect. I'm back, baby. You yeah, know, I well, it. you know, you know. For all we know, you know, Herb did all the drawings, and Stanley's just like, okay, now I gotta explain why they're reviving him, and then why they're killing him. What if it was an inside joke, and he did it to piss him off? <laughs> He's like, you brought him back. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's interesting. Um, I was going to make him immortal. Yeah. He's going to die and come back. Well, the thing is, is that clearly, clearly this is way, this is early Hulk. This is pre, this is Hulk still needs to breathe. He can still yell in space. He's like Superman. Yeah. He's like Superman 4 like that, you know? He's Ooh. in space. He can talk. It's just fine. Don't be jealous that, you know, they can, you know, break the laws of physics. Don't be jealous. Just no, not a but, good look okay. on you. No, no, I'm just. I was saying it's like that. That there, there's that's that's just how powerful these creatures are. Superman and the Hulk. They're in space. Don't they're don't talking. be telling Kryptonians and you know gamma radiation infused people what they can and can't do, Charlie. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not it's 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 a beautiful thing to watch, and uh, hey, you know. Hey, hey Lilith, how about Betty Banner pointing Gwen Stacy? Oh, my poor Bruce, where are you? <laughs> Also, why is she in a wheelchair at the start of this? Because Hulk smashes. Have we not established that? But but she's then she's off the wheelchair later. So it's Nasty. just her middle name is Felicity. Yeah. Oh, but did anyone else catch that very interesting typo that they put in 
to I think it's the next issue. I uh, it's either the next one or one thirteen. Yes, yeah, oh, oh yeah. Uh huh. The name. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, uh-huh. I know. Forty no, and sixty was. See, we said she's behind everything. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So I mean, it's it's it, it's fun. It's exciting. It, it it's a rip roaring tale of violence against spaceships. It's Hulk in space, though. I'll just be honest. Cosmic Hulk just doesn't do it for me. But these are funny. But it just doesn't do it for me. Well, it's just it's weird because we it's 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 an unusual place to send the Hulk. Because the Hulk's and, whole thing... And they go back to this over and over. <laughs> well, it's either here or Jarella's world. You know, it's, I think they're just, like, looking for, like, more science fiction-y enemies for the Hulk. You know, because it's like, Earth, oh, he can smash everybody. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I don't mind that. It's just, like, any time you put him in space, it, you know, he can't fly. So... <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's like he's standing on a rocket. Gets his little astronaut suit on and... <laughs> You know, it's 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 weird that he that he's just hanging out to the rocket ship, and you know, like I told you, Banner's suicidal, and he's trying to see what's gonna kill him. That is my head cannon, and you cannot change my yeah. mind. Hey man, yeah. Hulk just want to be Hulk just want to be left alone, man. And no matter where he goes, space, wherever, man, he can't he can't be. No one leaves him alone. No, well, you know, he could have asked Reed Richards to send him in a rocket. <laughs> you didn't have to hitch a ride. This is what happens when you hitch. Well, you know, and you don't well, have gas, grass, or you know, the the whole thing is though is like Hulk wants to be left alone. Banner doesn't. Banner no, doesn't Banner want does. To... He's well, a curmudgeon. But He's he doesn't want to admit. He doesn't want to admit how much him and the Hulk have in common. He wants so, like, Banner could go to Reed Richards say, "Can you just send me somewhere?" Like you're going to do in 20 years anyway. Exactly. Years, years. <laughs> um, you know, but. He's not going to do that because, first off, he doesn't really want to do that. Banner wants to live on Earth with Betty. Uh, Hulk wants to go somewhere and be alone. But, you know, anywhere the Hulk goes, people want to pick a fight with him. That's what happens when you're the biggest guy in the yard, honestly, though. It's one of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really it is. Like, look look at Galaxy Master, for instance. Couldn't just be happy ruling his little side of the galaxy. No, his ego cost him his whole empire. Gotta well, keep your eye on the prize. Well, I mean, but to be fair, the Galaxy Master's plan from the start was always flawed because this whole idea is I have to prevent someone as powerful as me from rising, so I have to kill all life in the universe. Just mind your exactly mind your business. Talk about I know. Be- talk about Do being the alone. opposite of colonialism and imperialism. Mind your business. Stay where you're at, and you're done. You're good. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. You know. Oh, all right. Me. So should we move to the next one? Yeah, move on to the next one because we got the warlord and the and the princess and oh yeah, yeah, sneaky, sneaky princess. Hey, oh, and we got all to right. pick up. A... Yeah, okay. Re- re- read the synopsis, Philly. Incredible <laughs> Hulk number one twelve, February nineteen sixty nine. The brute battles on <laughs> with the same. Up, uh, up! Of... Somebody's face down on a cover. Take a drink. Take a drink. 1969 rule. All right. <sighs> With the Hulk battling the Galaxy Master, the princess of the aliens enslaved by Galaxy Master decides that now is the best time to attack their master and win their freedom. This is a plan her uncle disapproves of, and to further his own ambitions of, uh, of rule, he decides to warn Weasel. the Galaxy Master of this revolt. It's always a bootlicker somewhere. Uh, uncle. You know, from his perspective, this is a nice, sweet gig, and now he gets to move up the chain of command. Yeah, you're going to bring the graph of the Galaxy Master. I mean, well, and from his perspective, it's like nothing we've thrown at this this Galaxy Master has ever worked for us. So why do we think this is the one time it's going to work? You know, it's probably not. And you know he's 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 playing his odds. He's making this bet. He he's he figures I'm going to. He stick throws with it. He threw work. he threw the roulette ball on the double zero. Oof. Well, you Oof. know, and like I said, it, it would have worked if it if it had worked. It would have got away with it too. He would have got away with it, <laughs> got away with it if it not had it not been for that meddling Hulk. Because <laughs> that's yeah. the that yeah that is the theme. 
Rot row. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, if, you know, if not for the Hulk, you know, the planet would have been thrown off its axis. Or maybe Kazar would have stopped the thing, I guess. Maybe the Hulk's completely superfluous, you know? It's like, nah, Kazar could have handled it. And could you imagine, just for a second, a Hulk jumping inside of you and beating you from the inside out? Hey, oh, I know Betty, Betty gets it all the time, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know. That, that's one hell of a fight. <laughs> uh, I'm just, yeah, it's, it's. It's neat. Um, I, I like everyone trying to <laughs> upset again, the diary. <laughs> what, what I'm gonna say is like clearly everyone. Everyone knows the weakness of the Hulk is he still needs to breathe. Except, are we sure he does? Because every time they try this, it doesn't kill him. Isn't it's it? like Kryptonite and Superman, who's like, everyone, oh, his one weakness is Kryptonite, but it doesn't kill him. Yeah, and but like, it weakens him. <laughs> Yeah, but isn't Hulk like Superman that like he can hold his breath for like I don't know like an hour or something? Well, you know, I guess so. That's what they said, but it's just convenient it like plot no one... point is convenient. First of all, oh, well, you know what it is? It's 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 movie rules. You know where they try to choke someone out and they pass out, and that actually if you want to kill them, you actually have to maintain that loss of oxygen for like five minutes to really kill someone. So um, and like this, life pro tips from that Charlie that Usser. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Women like to see people get murdered. Although I already knew that, of course. But well, well Exhibit A, <laughs> yeah. Exhibit A, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, wow. and uh, and of course, it's one of these things where where the villain is undone by his own hubris. Because again, what what is the like? You know, the if the if the if the Galaxy Master would have just killed that princess. Instead of taking her hostage, superior the Hulk, puss. The, the Hulk <laughs> would not have jumped inside the Galaxy Master. Superior which, puss. Which basically Don't worry, he'll be back in two seventy, Charlie. It's okay. Oh, uh, the Galaxy Master does come back. One hundred and fifty-eight issues from this one. Yes. Sir. Yeah, man, okay. that's the mess with that's the mess with Rocket. <laughs> There we go. I read that story just for poops and giggles. I was like, wait a minute, he comes back. Oh, that's right before we get another, you know, banner with you know, you yeah. know, the Hulk with banners brain era. Yeah. <sighs> well, you know, he's a galaxy master. He's like, Oh, I got bombarded with a ton of gamma rays now. <laughs> it's the Hulk with banners brain. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, I mean, as you as you do. And to be fair, you know, the the, the, the differentiation between the Hulk and Banner is always a complex issue. That's when um, he got. His, that's when he got his presidential pardon. Back when that meant something. Yeah. Yeah. Any, well, anybody yeah. after Nixon? Well, actually, Ford because he pardoned Nixon. So yeah, anybody after Ford, yeah, it doesn't really yeah. matter. You know, but what's interesting here is, um, you know, he 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 wins the day, and and again, he could just say, "Okay, I'm on this nice new planet. Everyone's kind of chill. No one's hunting me." Maybe I'll just stay here. No, and then Bruce just, kicked him from the inside and said, "We got to get Betty." Yeah, got to go back. <laughs> Need the Betty. They gimme, make, gimme. They, they, they make a they make a rocket ship for him. And it's just going to take like a little while for us to like adjust the pressure and all that stuff. Make it give you a nice, safe, comfortable ride. He's like, "No, Hulk doesn't need that." Hulk just wants light it on fire like a like a like a firecracker. Ah! <laughs> Hulk yeah, just strap it on my butt. And now I'm going. And again, just the idea that you know. And then as soon as he's in the rocket ship and he goes, oh, wait, now I'm sleepy. Oh, no, and now poor Banner can't, can't He did it on purpose. The... We all know that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's, 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 well, but then Banner saves him by exposing himself to gamma irradiated gas. <laughs> as you do. I mean, Stan did have an obsession with gamma, gamma everything. So, makes yeah, sense. everything's gamma, man. Oh, I mean, radiation. He liked the word. It was like salsa to to Stanley. Gamma, gamma, well, gamma, well, gamma. Well, well, especially radiation. I mean, gamma, cosmic. I'm like, what about Delta? What about Alpha? What about Sigma, Epsilon? We don't know what hit that radioactive spider. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's you know. Or what uh, smacked know. Daredevil right? Well, in he face. didn't turn green, so we know it wasn't gamma no. or gray. So. Or purple, right. if you know, you know. <laughs> so yeah, so, so yeah, um, the Hulk, the Hulk smashed, and then he was ready to go to sleep. Yes, smash as you do. As you do. Um, 
Coitus? Fortunately, Was that a for- coitus joke, Philip? Coitus interrupt this, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, of course, that that's because that, that's where it ends, but then it Hulk continues. <laughs> Hulk continued like. next issue. And when we Hulk continue it, that's when he releases the Gamma Gas. And gamma, Gamma, yeah. Gamma, Gamma, Comma, Chameleon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, turns back into the Hulk, which is great. That's what I said. He was banned for five minutes. Like, oh, crap. The Hulk <laughs> intentionally leaves him in these traps where he's like, ah, you're going to have to turn back or you're going to die. Yeah. Can I just say F. Glenn Talbot? <laughs> First and foremost. <laughs> yeah, no, Glenn Talbert's completely a jerk. You know? I mean, eventually everyone says F. Glenn Talbert. <laughs> Talbert. They never bring him back. Yeah. I, I think they had like a nephew at one point, but yeah, they never bring him back. Yeah, well, you know, it's, you know, except in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Then they yes. yeah, yeah. shoot him in the head and make him into gravity. The TV show? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, call, I'm telling you, comics. Yeah, they never brought him back. You know, like I said, Peter David, I think, brought back like a nephew, but yeah, he dropped it in anyway, that volcano and he never returned. <laughs> you know what? Well, it's probably better that way. And and to be fair, you know, he's he's kind of a weird dude. You know, making his play for Betty. You know, trying to kill Betty's like person that she's with. It's like it's pretty messed up. It's pretty messed up what he does there. And so yeah, I, I can I can see how that's problematic for everyone, you know. Um and yeah, a flashback but, story, Hulk has the best best flashback stories in my opinion, especially in this era. They're not just like we couldn't think of anything, so we did a flashback. Well, like so was there a flashback in this or was or, or, Am I tripping? Oh, well, oh the 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 Sandman has his flashback. Yeah. It's talking about how he was. Yeah. Was so I'm just saying, like, to... even all the flashbacks in the Hulk book at this time, they're just like, they're better than everybody else. Everybody else is like, oh, we forgot to write a story. Let's just retell something. <laughs> yeah. But that, <laughs> that but we but already read. Well, again, well, again, yeah, that's what they did in this era. It's like, haha. I mean, unlike these days where it's like, oh, yeah, the guy was supposedly dead. Now he's alive. Again, yeah. back in these days, Stan always explained how people, like, came back or, you know, where they were been, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of miss and, that, but I kind of don't. <laughs> you know, but I do like the fact that you know he he wants to find his old pal Blastar. Him and Blastar were a great team, and you know if I now if I steal this thing, it'll somehow get me to the next. Hydro Man is in the corner weeping somewhere right now. He's not even <laughs> around yet. <laughs> yeah, like Denny O'Neill. <laughs> yeah, but you know, um, you know, and this. Although it, it's it's neat when you look at Sandman because he has had such a a a weird run from Spider-Man villain to Fantastic Four villain, mm. and I really feel like when he's a Fantastic Four villain, he is much more capable. He's a much more confident Sandman. Yeah, he's like really, he really like the Wizard definitely rubbed off. Reed on Richard him. brings it out in people. Yeah. Okay, Charlie, people just really yeah, want to no. punch him in the face. So, but like, whenever, gotta be competent. But like when he, but whenever he goes back to like just the green T-shirt, he's just a big dumb guy again. And it's, Girl, it's you missed your joke, by the way. That, what? He's trying to get back to the negative zone. <laughs> what? You know, instead of danger zone, negative zone. Oh, okay. Come on, uh-huh. people! Top Gun is in the theater, number one in the theaters again. Get your heads out of your butts. It's it's 1986 I, again. Hashtag thanks, deal with it. Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, um, Ray will appreciate that. Guy. I guess it's, and it's actually not the kids. It's like one of the first times that like a movie is driven by old people. It's just old people going to the theater, reliving their glory days. I, w- I, I was it's born like, in you know, that year, so he's not talking to me. That's that. <laughs> that's, 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 that's Charlie Esser. Yeah, I'm like, I was really? born that year. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've really? never even seen the original Top Gun. Uh, no, I'm just telling you that the, the demographics of who is going to this film, it's oh, not yeah, young people. It's not Xennials. It's not yeah, millennials. Yeah, no, my parents went, yeah. It is, it's, it's boomers and Gen Xers, you know. That's that's who's that's who are powering the. Yeah, it's not me. The, uh, <laughs> like I said, it's not me. Let's go see if they'll play more shirtless volleyball. Oh, <laughs> Oh Lord, who? Okay, who is it? Who is this? Be sure to smash or clap. Hey, Tris, can you check the is it Russell? I feel probably, like it's Russell. probably Hulk expert. 
Go to bed, Russell. I know it's you. Unless you're wrestling up some feedback. All right, but yes, this is this is one thirteen because after Sandman like convinces Hulk, he's like, "Oh hey, you hate those guys on the base? Me too. You should go attack them." <laughs> <laughs> and yes, this is the issue with Betty, where he calls out Betty Brant instead of Betty Ross. It was me, uh, Spidey. <laughs> Hulk wants superior puss doom <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's worse ways to go out. So, hey, oh. oh. Man, you want the you want the quickest way to turn uh, Hulk back in the banner? There you go. He crashed into her car almost. What? He almost crashed into her car. Yeah, like what are you doing, dude? I know. But yeah, Charlie, when uh, Sandman convinces Hulk to attack the base, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, are you okay? Are you okay, Charlie? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay, we're, we're back now. I don't know. Um, that yeah, kid's not on anything. It just every so often the Wi-Fi just decides to. The that's New enough. Jersey, the New Jersey Devils. Boycott AT and T. Yeah, hell yeah, no. I, you know, it's the way of trying to make me do the upgrade because it's due for an upgrade. So it's like I got to go and see what's the new, what's the new uh, hub. Anyway, uh, yeah, so yeah, so. <laughs> But yeah, the Sandman. Yeah, uh, convinc- about, like- yeah, the Sandman convincing the Hulk to attack the base. You know, yeah, this is the one thirteen is the issue where he says Betty Brant instead of Betty Ross. Hey, Tristan, why don't you hand me my my phone, maybe? And I I just want to let you know that I would have rather read Fantastic Four sixty two to sixty three. <laughs> really? <laughs> this one's like stop, stop. Wasn't as good as the other two to me. Oh my god, it gets even crazier next issue. I that, know. But that Sandman Mandarin team. <laughs> Anytime the Mandarin shows up, it's terrible, first of all. <laughs> well, yeah, especially this era. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We under, we under the... And he muted himself. Sorry. So we're on to issue 14 now? 114? Uh, well, yeah, we were just saying it's correct. You know, Lilith was saying, you know, she'd rather would have read those Fantastic Four issues than 113. I'm like, well, it gets even worse at 114 when the Mandarin shows up to team up with Sandman. <laughs> Ah, the Mandarin in this era. Problematic. <laughs> Even calls him Fu Manchu. It's like, oh, way to call it out, Stan. It was a different time, but it still was never okay. <laughs> no. Waiting for him to twirl that mustache. Ah, oh, so. Uh, but yeah, again, Betty, Betty, Betty Brand. Uh, responsible. I, I think our theory is probably really true, Phil. It's just that he's gone now, so he couldn't finish the story. Oh, true. Oh, Stan. Oh, yeah. Stan had Stan had from the beginning from amazing. Find those old journals. <laughs> it was BB. <laughs> it was me, Petey. I just, I just want to see that. I just want to see it. <laughs> She's like, I married one of your best friends, and you still didn't pay attention to me. I tried to seduce one of the world's greatest heroes. He wasn't interested, so I uh, married one of his friends. Then I then I uh, was this close to Jameson, so I controlled the media. Exactly. And then I joined a cult, and then I decided to have some guns and some pouches. hey I messed up Mr. Fear. We're going to get there, kids. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Russell going, oh, yeah, Mr. Fear. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Uh, okay. So we're back now. I tried switching it to my phone Wi-Fi to see if that works better. So we'll see. Oh, you can hear me, so <laughs> Yeah. Well, I can hear you. You can hear me. So let's see if it. We'll see if it maintains. All right. So yeah. Well, so one fourteen, Phil. Yeah. So how problematic was uh, the man during this? Issue? Uh, honestly, he was relatively benign compared to the way that uh, the Sandman is. Yeah, when but we get a lot like, more the dumb guy, dumb guy Sandman in this, so it's it's interesting. He like just code switches himself back to dumb guy once there is an actual super genius in the room, you know. <laughs> ah, well, and then you have to like really to get what's going on. You have to go back to one hundred eight. So it's like I hate when they make those big leaps. It's like just finish the damn story. <laughs> well, no, because the Mandarin has to plan. He has to get his next. Idea now it's I'll team up with the Sandman because clearly <laughs> it's always like oh Mr. Sandman bring me a dream it's like bring me an L 
bring me a loss for this. Well, you know. Well, again, was, I mean, he was bad and out of his leagues. He was originally a Spider-Man villain. The first time he fights Spider-Man, Spider-Man defeats him with a vacuum cleaner. As you yeah. should. Well, you know. As you do. Although, to be fair, that was probably in the city, not a lot of sand around. As oh yeah, it was in the basement. It was in the basement of the high. It was in the yeah. basement of Midtown High. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like once he gets when he's like if he's near sand now he's like. But we do get to see him at the beach powerful. a lot. To be fair, when he shows up, yeah. we we know we're going to the beach. <laughs> yeah, well, because that's where he's or the pier. You know, it'd be silly of him to fight anywhere else except the beach. So. He's a he's a son um, of the beach. Anyway. Um, but uh, oh, but it, um, what about the Mandarin having like Thanos envy with his own helicopter? As you do, it's a good way to get around town in New York. I'm just saying, cut all that traffic out. <laughs> to be fair, I think I think this I think the Mandarin copter probably predates the the Thanos copter. So, and now I'm just trying to think: was he in a helicopter in Shang Chi? Was there a scene with him in a helicopter? Yeah, it, there was a scene. When with they him went in to the helicopter. compound, wasn't it? Weren't they in the helicopter? Yeah. yeah. See, there we go. Just, I think you're right, it's Charlie. I think it's back, back in '79 is when that Thanos copter came out. Oh, he was ten yeah. years before Thanos. Suck it, Thanos. Exactly, man. You know. Well, Thanos is just a blatant ripoff, so it only makes sense. Ooh. And you know, let's be clear. I mean, Mandarin had the, the he had he had the jewelry first. He had the copter first. You know, he just was unfortunately drawn. Um, <laughs> yeah, and of course, at one point, yes, Henman actually calls him Fu Manchu, which is like, <clears throat> you know, we can't, you, te- technically, we can't say that because we lost the rights in this scene, but, um, <laughs> or maybe, yeah, it's, oh, gosh, gosh, and goodness. Um, yeah, but uh, they. <laughs> You know, and they use the, the, the negative force beam on the Hulk there so that he's, he's fighting against himself. And, of course, that never works. But Why honestly, he called him Charlie work? Chan, too, though. But Ringo yeah. was my favorite. <laughs> that was my favorite insult, because we all know. Ringo's Ringo. Ringo Peace was, and love, peace and love. Um, oh, you want a song? After... Let's put it on the fridge right here. <laughs> You know, I, I thought he called Ringo because he had joke. all the rings. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch that show. Um, but that, but then, the, you know, half-naked Bruce Banner sneaking into Betty's room and, you know, Glenn Talbot. Yeah. Oh, let's oh, let's rush him. Don't they know he's the Hulk at this point? They're like, yeah, let's rush him. That can't go wrong. Yeah, well, they do know that. And it just, you know. Glenn Everybody Talbot thinks it's is... going to be their day when they want to fight the Hulk. Bro. I guess they, they think, think they're going to be their knock, day. I guess they think they're going to knock him out before it can change, but, uh well, that never works. Um, you know, it's you know, it's 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 just a poorly it's it's a poorly thought out plan. It's always a poorly thought out plan. You, well, you, well, U.S. government. It yeah. Is. yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Oh goodness. Oh, but this so, this is what this this is the issue because this gets brought up later in the '90s in Spider-Man because uh, Otto creates a gun that to do this on purpose, but Sandman gets turned to glass in this issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Now is this the first time he gets turned to glass? I believe so because I because I believe when uh, uh, Otto pulls out that gun, he goes, "Ah, uh, you know, I invented this and, and I was inspired by a battle you had with the Hulk," and I believe it's this issue. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, but, but, oh, wait, no. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know. What the, doesn't the wizard do that to him too, though? He, yeah, I, I think. Well, it, I mean, yeah. I think Otto did honest, it. I, I know Otto did it to him twice, but yeah. Yeah. I think well, the wizard did it too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and 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 the Hulk has turned him into glass before. Um, I mean, I want to think that that Johnny Storm probably did it first. You know. That seems like a natural thing for Johnny Storm to have done, and I always thought this was the first one. Until everyone, I thought this was the first one. That everyone was like, "Oh, a happy, happy accident." Now we know his weakness. Well, I mean, he's well, you know, ex- should be a logical. It's not. It's not really his weakness. It's it's actually this thing where because even in this, he's turned to glass, but he can still move. But they're like, "Oh, don't punch him because he'll shatter." It's like, yes, he's made of sand. 
that's literally all he does is shatter. It's like, I know. What, what would make you think that him turning to glass is going to, because we already see him turn to sandstone. So we know he can become like physically solid stone and sand. Yeah, you, you really can't Being kill him. Being glass yeah, no. doesn't make him like less so. It's, it, it's, it just seems odd, but you know, but you know, then Sandman just sort of walks out, um, which is, and which just lets him walk out and, uh, then the army zaps uh, does, him. Zaps yeah. the Hulk. And then this time they shoot the Hulk with the tranquilizer ray. They're like a new and weapon. Let's try out. it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. It works. It works for this issue until next issue. Which the guy, the, our fans are going to have to wait two weeks to hear us talk about the next issue, I think. That's right, because next week is Little Hellfire Spectacular 269. <laughs> You mean the sexiest show we've ever done? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The top 30 sexiest superheroes? Yeah, that's right. It's not top 30. It's, it's our top 10 picks, though. Okay? It, well, 10, 20, 30. I know, but that's not how you bill it. That's not how you bill it. How dare you? Top, uh, but... top 10 is what sells. It's, what, it's, what, it's the hashtag, okay? And at, <laughs> and at least one of our patrons already said he's going to send in thoughts. Thank you, Justin. Oh! Ooh, now, now I want to know. I was going to say, you guys might be fighting over Namor. <laughs> <laughs> well, wherever he decides to place him, that's fine. Ew. Bye. Goodbye, Charlie Esser. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> oh, yeah, it should be that. <laughs> it's a gaping hole of internet. So, yeah, these issues are cute, but, like, not a lot of substance. Well, no, yeah. I mean, the Hulk doesn't gain substance until the 80s, if we're going to be honest. But again, I mean, I think this is this was the one where Stan really went out of control, just because it's like, oh, he's not on Earth. I could do whatever, you know, you don't have to do it. I don't do it anyway. You it's know, like you nobody gave Stan a science book. It's cute. You <laughs> couldn't do this with Spider-Man, uh, you know. Everyone so else. You're already in space all the time with the Fantastic Four, but that's none of my business, okay? You really like space. You don't understand how it works. I get it. Everybody's getting bombarded with some kind of radiation. I get it, so I get it. 60s, man. They were obsessed with radiation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's that space race, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Who is that knocking at the door? Hello, hey! Charlie. Hey, Big Three. Hey, you want to talk some comics? Or... Yes. 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 Let's talk some new comics. <laughs> some 2022 yes. comics. Although I don't know how Comic technically corner. how happy I'm about that. Ooh, burn. All right, Charlie, let it rip. The comics, that is. Cracker. Hey, resemble that. Yes. Um, Department of Truth issue. What is this? Something issue nineteen, Department of Truth. Um, what issue number? Yeah, you know. Uh, Wait, did it's you say a rough one. Did you say nineteen, 19. already? Wow, yeah, issue nineteen. Yeah, well, you know, they keep on stacking them up. It's a very popular series, I understand. Um, kids are loving, loving the story of you know the Earth is secretly flat, or it could be if we just believed. Uh, you know, it's it's a neat thing about you know, the Kubrick moon landing and all that kind of stuff, and and basically Cole is having a real hard time with his boyfriend Maddie, and you know, because he can't tell him about all this stuff, um, and Lee's really riding him, you know, trying to keep him together and uh, having him hold it together, because you know, right now they are being heavily trashed by the by the uh, black hats right now and that's bad Trashy. and you know they're going uh maddie or sorry cole and his uh his his partner are going to fort knox to sort of do something we don't know yet but then maddie gets approached by this guy in the bar who is one of the black hats and he's going to show him a video of cole killing Maddie's friends, uh, who also work at the post. So this is this is problematic because he actually did do that. So it's not even like it's a fake thing. So, oh boy, I gotta tell you, Department of Truth 
really, really good series. Uh, run out and pick up your copy today, kids. Little Hellfire. Um. So don't cancel me, but uh, I'm going to talk about Boom Studios, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. At least it wasn't written by Joss. It was written by Jeremy Lambert, who I loved his run on Doom Patrol, which is the only reason why I picked it up. Art by Mariana uh, Ignazi. Um, you probably don't know, but An Unkindness of Ravens is what that person's most known for. Um, basically, it's Buffy and Willow trapped in a 1990s uh, teen magazine. So I, I don't... Mm, teen? No, I don't know. Teen Beat? Tiger Beat? Something like that? Ooh. Yeah. A and then it, but, but what it really came for was Giles and freaking Spike. Spike's giving Giles a makeover because he's got a hot date. It's not with Buffy's mom, so I don't approve, obviously, but that's the story. That's just, it's really cute. It's basically the Buffy 97 trade. So if you already have the, the trade paperback that came out a while ago, they're actually just reissuing these as single one shots again. So. so is it just Buffy the Vampire Slayer number one? Uh, Buffy 97 specifically. It's It's a throwback oh. because... You know, all the new stuff is post the TV show. Yeah. This is, like, supposed to be going on during the TV show. Uh-huh. All right. Did, uh, well, uh Did anybody read uh, Iron Cat, number one? Uh, a long-ass time ago. No. Well, it just came out for us mere mortals this week, little Hellfire. Yeah, so I was like trying to pick which which ones to read today and which ones to read tomorrow, and I was worried that Iron Cat was gonna be was gonna be an Avengers book. But okay, but tell me about Iron Cat. I mean, it could have been. I mean, there's not a ton of Tony Stark to like. Is the this end. just a uh, Black Cat Incorporated? I feel like that's what it is because it's an international traveling band of you I, know rich people. Here. I mean, they basically do a flashback, Charlie, with you know when she was working with the Black Box, and then there's this other. Uh, girl working with them who's the one who steals the iron cat's uh, armor in the present because it has all, all of a sudden it has all it has repulsors and everything and black cat's like wait where did all this come from and tony stark's like yeah i've been tinkering you know that's what i do i tinker with it yeah i get a hanker in the drink and i just tinker with stuff <laughs> relatable relatable hey, i didn't think that i was gonna really like the dynamic between tony and and Felicia, but it, uh, they're, they're like the jokes in this issue alone. Like, I'm just, yes. Yeah. If but all at, the issues at, are going to be like this, yes. But at the at the end, when she shows up at Tony's place and he's like, no, I ain't working with you. And she goes, she goes, please, come on. My ex, my ex-girlfriend is trying to kill me with super science. And Tony's he's like, like okay, relatable. I've been you there. Son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> 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 yeah, their yeah. dynamic is going to be bananas. I love it. But yeah, of course the story's good and the and the dialogue because it is Jed McKay. So and I, I will have to say that the prerequisite reading is uh, Black Cat number eleven. Yeah, if you haven't read that. You definitely need to read that before you read this. Where we first saw this suit, but yeah, no, it's pretty yes. good. It, again, it's a, it's set up a lot with that like that uh, flashback and stuff. But no, it is good. So, but pick it up. See, look, I got the. Uh, 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 action figure variant, secret additional head included. Now, if they're hopefully they really freaking release it. What? That oh yeah, the figure the, the, the figure. Oh yeah, oh, well, Lilith is Jones, and she hasn't bought a uh, figure in five minutes. <laughs> I actually don't usually buy Mar uh, Marvel Legends. I don't because I don't feel like they're worth the price that they charge for. They're not like the DC ones that are better. And yeah, anyway, DC has a better that... manufacturer for the toys. They do. <laughs> I just hate that you have to get all of the ones to build the special character and there's always like one or two you can never find well you, you know what some people do Charlie it's like, don't make all the same ones it's like yeah like no they they like you know like no actually you'll never get the head because they only made five of the of the character that has the head well you know what some people do Charlie Esser they get those random pieces they'll like sell them on eBay for people who are building the figure they'll be like oh you can buy this arm for like you know five bucks or something don't judge me <laughs> I mean, I told I, you, Tom, I keep fun. my stuff making new stuff, okay? <laughs> you know, honestly, it, to me, that's like a really costly hobby. That's 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 a Tristan hobby. Mm. Although, oh, I will tell you this, Tristan is, uh, his grandfather got him some Spawn toys, so now he's, he's Ooh. dipping his You took it out of the package? The... He took it out of the package? I would assume so. Uh... Rookie mistake. Look where no, he lives, little health. Look at his role model. Look at his role model, little hellfire. <laughs> Justin plays with his toys. So yeah. So so he was thinking so he so he hasn't asked me to get him a spawn book yet. So 
I'm, but maybe I'm, you guys want to recommend Give him Gunslinger. Different. Give him Gunslinger. Yeah. Gunslinger. Or King Spawn. Those are the uh, only two I would recommend right now. I, okay. I, I'm, see, I'm feeling a Phil, Lil, and Tristan uh, Spawn chef. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, if he gets into it. His too hard to nail down. I can't, I can't be up that early. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Tristan, he's young. He can, he has all hours of the day available to him. Oh, it's summer. summer vacation. Yes, It'll, okay. That, that's all right. Then every other show will be like, ah, oh, we got Charlie Esser, the second best Esser. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he's third best as well. You forget he has another oh. son, Ben. Yeah, and you know, he might my wife fourth. is technically an esser too, so <laughs> I, I'm probably like fourth. I might even be fifth because you know. <laughs> oh no, you're Homer. <laughs> um, no. This was this was an interesting book I picked up just because you know, actually, you know why I got this book from Scout Comics, Wannabes. It was on the shelf. Is it's holding the line at two ninety nine? Oh. If you put out a book at two ninety nine and said, you know what, I think I had to buy it. Was that Ages of the is, World? I uh, know it's called Wannabes. Oh, okay. Is that from last and, week? No, it was this week. This came out oh. this week. Okay. At least it came out to my comic book store this week, you know. With, with the way books come nowadays, who knows when they they show up <laughs> anywhere. Um, and it's interesting because it starts off with this, like, fight between these two superpowered beings. Um, one who's got, like, telekinesis powers and one with super strength. Then we do the flashback to, like, you know, because, like, I can't believe that he used to be my best friend, yada, yada. We flashback to when they first started as superheroes, where there were two teen kids who, like, barely knew karate and put on some ski masks to go fight crime. But, you know, they mentioned, you know, like, this is a superhero world. Superheroes have been around since the 40s, and there's lots of superheroes without powers, you know. So they figured this was a viable career path. Um... And they kind of run into a little problem because, obviously, uh, the one guy, uh, the guy who will eventually get the telekinesis powers, you know, he basically figures, you know what, we got to be willing to fight dirty if we're going to be superheroes, you know. We're not going to be the guys that can just nobly, you know, use kung fu. We got to fight dirty. We got to use mace and tasers and other things. And guns, you see him pick up a gun, and that's where they really have their falling out. Billy Butcher, um, is that you? Yeah, but of course, you see, what it is, is as luck would have it, it's it's canisters of radioactive gas. Once again, it all comes back to the Hulk. Uh, and they get exposed to the radioactive gamma gas. And then, you know, the guy, this guy, when the cops come up, he falls in the water, and that's going to have somehow be his origin. And this guy, he steps on electrical, an electrical cable, so that's his origin. And we're gonna have to see what they all become. Next issue. So that was interesting. I enjoyed it. Um, it's a nice light superhero romp. Um, shades of Kickass, but you know, also less uh, less less uh, less nihilistic. So it's like, what if the what if the people in Kickass actually just you know wanted to be heroes, and heroes were actually a kind of ennobled thing in this world? So. It's like if Disney did kick ass. So <laughs> I liked it. Wannabe's number one. Spice. We've made, we made the joke for oh. years, but what's, what's your superhero origin? Uh, OSHA's bad at its job. Yes. <laughs> Scoot Comics. I'm sorry. Scoot Comics. S -C -O -O oh, I was going to say, I did not see that on the scout shelf. So I was just like. Yeah. <laughs> Here says Scoot. So I'm not print. quite sure how that works, but yeah, yeah. You I see wonder if it's one of their weird imprints or something. And they have oh, this yeah. is also coming from Scout Comics here, Soltiak. I don't know who she is, but she's got powers, so she's cool. Okay, Phil, so, um, you probably want to pick this one up because this next one I'm going to talk about is written and the art is by Chip Zdarsky. It's called Public Domain Number One. It's from Image Ooh. Comics. And it is a very tongue-in-cheek poke at uh, a world where comic book creators aren't properly acknowledged or compensated for their creations. What? No oh, such world. Exists. So his, okay, so basically here's the story. There's this guy. He created the best superhero in the world, and his sons want him to fight for their legacy, basically. So that's the story. Don't know how long this is going to go on, but I was like, Chip, they're going to cancel oh. you now. I was going to say, careful. I was going to say, yes. Be careful. 
<laughs> I gotta pick this up. Salty meta commentary. Yes. You you know I live for it. You know. Uh, As I live and breathe, I was like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> and then, then they come at him. No, no, no. It's just a story. Kids, it's, yeah. it's satire and parody. He pulled a little Popeye. It's satire and parody. <laughs> I don't feel that way. I love my jobs on Daredevil, Daredevil and Batman. No. I, like I tell you, if you're not reading any of Chip Zdarsky's independent stuff, you need to pick it all up. It's all genuinely really good. Oh, really yeah. Really good. <laughs> this might uh, be my new favorite from him. <laughs> is that the first issue? Yes, the first issue. Okay, uh, public right. domain number one. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick that up this weekend. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, all right, big surprise. I know. Lil, did you read Scorched number seven? Of course. <laughs> I, you know that, that that one creeped up on me i didn't think i was gonna like it but it's good i mean it's getting there i mean it's it needs to be a little more violent but oh just a little just a smidge more i thought there was a good bit of action in this one and ghosts and monsters it, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a 12 year old's wet dream not gonna lie it's it's like it's like a political intrigue with uh de monsters and demons. Oh my. Yeah, it kind of reminds Yay. me of um what was that book? Uh dang it. It'll come. That DC book that we really liked um Tar Human Target, that that one where it was like noir. This but more that but more violent. <laughs> But no, I I don't know, this one almost, uh, maybe especially just this issue, but it's, it almost seems like they want to give She Spawn her own book, but it's like, uh, They're no, too scared. I don't know, you're a girl, so we're off to throw all the other spawns in there with you. Well, and to be fair, Image is not really known for a lot of female-led books, so I mm. get their hesitation at, at like a company level. But sometimes you just got to pull the trigger, like they pulled the trigger with the Mary Jane book and got really good response. Same thing with Black Cat, so sometimes you just do have to do that. I know. I wonder with Iron Cat. I wonder if they're like uh, testing the waters for another Black Cat series because they keep dipping back in that pond. So Jen McKay's like, I I'll do it this one time. I, I need a break. <laughs> I mean, hey, <laughs> I mean, hey, look what he's doing with Moon Knight. It must be selling well, man. They they greenlit it past twelve. <laughs> that apparently that's really hard to do these days. I mean, if you're not Spider Man or the Avengers, that, that, that ain't easy to do these days. Even the Avengers squad is a scrub. <laughs> I know. Well, that's all, that, that's corporate welfare, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that, that's that's hey hey hey, go see the go buy those movies on uh, Blu-ray and uh, go pick up the T-shirts. <sighs> all right. Yeah, go uh, my final there. book. Yeah, final book. Uh, another female-led book, written by the great Gal Simone. Uh, variants. Oh yeah, I was gonna pick that up, but how was it? Oh, it was good. It is solid. Um, it is, it is, it's, it's variants, man. It's, um, so the basic plot line is, uh, you have, you have, um, you have Jessica Jones. She's having some, some issues. She's keeps on getting these migraines passing out. She's buying lipstick, which is a whole thing. And it's just a really well-written story slice of life story about her like you know her relationship with um with luke and who she wants to be for luke but uh at the same time matt is defending someone who had uh basically been taken by Kilgrave and is now accused of setting her house afire with her family inside um oh we also Poor Hammerhead in this. Um, Hammerhead is running an extortion uh, racket and apparently comes down himself. And uh, Hammerhead is not up for the challenge of Jessica Jones. So she beats him up. Only Luke Go Cage is man enough for that challenge. Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. So she goes to court to, to sort of be support in this moment. and But the whole thing is the woman is basically telling uh, Jessica that 10 years after she got away from Kilgrave, that's when, that's when she snapped. And it was this, like a post-hypnotic suggestion that after 10 years, he was back inside her brain 
and made her do these things. And she's saying to Jessica, everything he did to you, he did to me first. So I'm warning you, get away from your family. Don't let yourself be with your family. But she goes back home. And then, of course, in the, her house is someone. Uh, she's very worried about it. Of course, it is her. Because we're going to have the variants. And then, of course, as they're fighting, they get hit by that shield. Wielded by, of course, Jessica Jones, Captain America. So, they really like pushing that Captain America variant, don't they? <laughs> you know what? Hey, if it sells, it sells. There's a lot of that going around lately. Just ask uh, Gwen Stacy and Miles Morales. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know, to varying what, what degrees you... of success. Well, you know, not every not everything is going to work, but you know what? If you can, you know, that's a, they that's had why they to, you had me to the Captain America thing. You had multiverse. Me. Yeah, well, <laughs> to be okay. fair, in another universe. Danielle Cage becomes Captain America too. Yeah. So it's like they, they've established this as an idea within their family. So, and in every that, universe, so everyone gets to be Captain America eventually. That's true. It's like being an Avenger. Everybody's done it. <laughs> okay, Phil. So I don't know if you and um, Will actually know this, but Swamp Thing number fourteen, the best DC book this week, had a Green Lantern in it. Oh yes, I did see. I and did it was see very that. good. I did see that. I didn't pick it up. I might have to pick that up too. Yeah, I did. I did. And see if you that. guys talk it, let me know. I will jump on with you. But yeah, it was really good. Like okay. I like this whole swamp thing. They give him. They're giving him so much more emotion. Yeah. And then it's this social commentary about how man can truly not save nature because man is evil and only out for themselves. Is kind that of the, thing. Is that the is that the first issue? Uh, how Jordan was in uh, is issue four. Yes, this is the very okay. first one. Okay. So yeah, it's it's super interesting that they brought in a Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. But it, I actually liked it, and it worked. So I thought I, – I didn't hear you guys talk about it. I just wanted to make sure you hadn't talked about it. So Well, we haven't recorded since Tuesday anyway, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was thinking about picking that up. I might have to because, yeah, there's it seems there's a big How Jordan resurgence thanks to Dark Crisis. Yeah, look, listen, I'm just going to let you know this is the best book that Ram's writing right now. So Nice. Yeah. Damn it, I, I, I like to, to support good ideas. Damn it, now I'm going to have to pile 14. Damn it. <laughs> no, 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 you can jump in right here. Yeah, it's fine. Because okay. that was just basically the first arc, the first 13 issues. So. Okay. All right, the last one I wanted to throw in, Lilith, did you read uh, the one-shot DC vs. Vampires Killers? No. Basically, Harley Quinn is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, I know. Sacrilegious. No, thank you. I mean, you know pretty, how I feel about Harley, so I don't know. I thought it was decent. I mean, if she's it, not with Catwoman or Poison Ivy, I do not care. Catwoman is in this little hellfire. Are they still doing the roller derby thing? No, no, no. It, this is like the like an alternate thing, you know, where you know a lot <laughs> well, of. Well, then the I don't want it. Is my point? Into vampires. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they're kind of sort if of. They're together. not roller derby lesbians. I'm not into it. <laughs> well, I don't know about the roller derby part. The other part, they might be. You know, they don't specifically call it out, but it might be. And the big bad, the big bad, there he she's fighting is uh, vampire Mister Terrific. Oh, okay, better than vampire Dick Grayson. I was gonna say this, this you know, this is a one shot on that DC vs. Vampires uh, regular series. Yes, with Dick Grayson, King of the Vampires. Thank you. Yeah, but wasn't Mister Terrific his number two? So is yeah, he yeah. like Mr. Terrific now moved up now that Dick Grayson get, didn't Dick Grayson die at the end of the last? Well, one? I mean, yeah, well, no, well, no, Dick Grayson's still alive, but well. A vampire, but no, he, you know, it's like he's the no, living like, dead, Phil. Yeah, you know, well, they, you know, they basically call him the sheriff, you know, Mr. Terrific, the sheriff. You know, it's like, oh, you know, the king sends out, you know, the sheriff of Nottingham, you know, yeah, yikes. <laughs> I, I refuse to support that DC versus vampires. It is no, no, stop it. <laughs> Poor Will, the first forget the first guy they vampirize is Hal Jordan. <laughs> Well, it makes sense because he thrives on women's sexual energy. I'm That's just true. saying, technically for me, headcanon confirmed. You know what? They were smart because at first you can't tell how Jordan's a vampire because he's like, yeah, with this ring, I can filter out the sunlight. <laughs> His biggest threat. Not anymore, but still. You know what? I'm surprised Ray's not all over this because when they reveal that Dick Grayson is like, you know, halfway through the series that Dick Grayson's king of the vampires, man, he puts his fist right through Batman. He has that he has that panel frame, trust me. <laughs> Spice Night Stand, his wife's like, I bet you he's cheating. He's just thinking about Batman getting in pale. <laughs> pale. Yes. 
All right. So on that note. So anything else? No, 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 no. Everything else there's a podcast for. <laughs> That's true. We have other shows. We have a whole other show to do tomorrow. Yeah, we got a bunch of Avengers books we can talk after we talk oh, old, yeah. old Thors tomorrow. Yeah. Well, yes. time to be an Avengers fan. <laughs> That's right. All right, kids. So, yes, as Charlie said, in two weeks we'll get back to the Hulk issues because next week is episode 269. We've been calling get it out for months. Get your picks in, people. The top 10, 10, 10 hottest, super, sexiest superhero. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a very eyebrow raising list for sure. From wow. <laughs> well, you know, ten's a big number. Uh, I'm just going to be honest, and because uh, I'm, you know, at name well, you're a Marvel Richard fan. Trio. It's super yeah, easy no, no. to do. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, well, sexy, not gaudy. <laughs> well, sexy is subjective. I would just say, sexy you know, is I mean, yeah, so I mean, each their own. Yeah, fair enough, fair Maybe enough. Maybe intelligence you know. is sexy to you. You know, you know, it doesn't have to be. Oh, um, leave that same well, sexual garbage outside, first of all. Technically, it's sexiest costume. That's the thing. Sexiest costume. This, and you can't like wear your smarts. Really, you, you can't. Well, it's, uh, Power Girl says different. <laughs> she doesn't need a face mask because she knows. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm she. That's a very sexy costume. I'm not. I'm not gonna deny that. I'm just. I'm just saying that you know. It's not her smarts. It's. Uh, Thinking it's half of Charlie's list is gonna be John Burns. John Burns characters. Well, you know. Well, it ain't nothing I, wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you who my number one is. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. Make him come back for more. <laughs> No and problem. No just, problem. Just like half of Los Los will be Jim Lee X Men character. <laughs> you mind your business, Philip. Uh, well, I'm sure one of them has a French accent. Anyway, uh, yes. So. <laughs> yes, I will be doing Mama Kelly proud. Yes, I will. <laughs> nice. Both of them, both characters. Anyway, yes, kids. So, uh, yes, send your thoughts in. Who are the sexiest uh, comic book characters? Uh, like I said, I know at least one of our patrons is going to be sending stuff in. So, yes, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can follow Capes and Lunatics on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, find links to all the various social medias for all the various Marvel and DC shows we do. Uh, again, uh Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Everything gets a video, including every second of summer of 69. So the candle is lit. That's right. And you can let your own if you go to Target. They're not a sponsor, but please. But they will, we will take their money. Please, Target. Yes. Hot cinnamon. Hey, oh. <laughs> Wasn't that your name in college? Hey, oh. Uh, all right. So, yes. Yeah, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, smash that subscribe button. Smash it. Like and, the Hulk. Hey, oh. And, of course, most importantly, subscribe to the Patreon. Once again, our paints is a pro passion project, paying for this out of our own pocket. We're not galaxy masters or... Uh, <laughs> Princesses. True. We're barely even Sandmen. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, brother? <laughs> nice. All right, so, yes. Uh, so, every little bit helps, but 3 to $5 gets you early access to creator interviews, including every month, Mr. D.G. Chichester. I got the good mic out for you guys. And superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. Uh, the June episode is up already. Superman 3 versus Superman 4, hotly contested, especially by these two. And next month, we'll be doing uh, the Halle Berry Catwoman Hill first. Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern, with special guest Mr. Will Allred. So that'll give make give us five panelists. So there will be no tie that that uh next month, kids. Unless someone abstains, and they better not. Oh no, I think we're all too opinionated now. All right, and of course, if that's not enough, you can uh, show how show show uh, all your friends how cool you are. Pick up some capes and lunatics and capes and lunatics sidekicks merch, cups, phone cases, T-shirts, real aluminium. Show us you love us. Tattoo us. Tattoo no, our no. Love. Real vibranium. Nobody tell Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get this man a tumbler. <laughs> All, right. All right. So find everything at Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capes and lunatics. Lilith Hellfire. Where can people talk to you about the fine art of 69? 
Uh, if you guys want to hang out with me on Twitter when I attempt to live tweet stuff and maybe tell me why I should be live tweeting, I feel like that's a dead thing now. Find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire, on Instagram at Lil Hellfire69, and of course on TikTok making all of the comments, but just a slight, maybe possibly the slightest bit of content. Cannot stress that possibly slightly enough at Lil Hellfire69. Either do the six or do the nine. <sighs> very hard, very tempting. Let me get a rat on your alligator back, bro. Somebody's muffin is getting buttered. That ain't my business. Charlie Esser. Well, if you'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way, if your Wi-Fi is working, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things, if there's ever anything to live tweet, at Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-C-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. Empire. And thank you, Tristan. <laughs> Kids today, what are you going to do? With their oculuses and their TikToks. <laughs> TikTok and their oculi. It's crazy. Hey, All right, kids. Thank you for joining us again. Summer of 69 really kicks in the kicks into high gear next week with episode 269. But until then, we have been your capes. Ampersand. Lunatics! Keep take, on take, take a deep dive into the head of Lil Hellfire next week! What is sexy? Brought to you by Lil Hellfire. Lil Hellfire Watch, Produ- brought to you by the number six and nine, of course. <laughs> a Lil Hellfire production directed by Lil Hellfire, starring Lil Hellfire. <laughs> what is this, the room? <laughs> uh. Alright, kids. Gonna be a smashing month here. Come back.